Hey, Luke here with catsandcarp.com and me and my boy Tommy here, we're gonna talk to you about some of the common myths about catfishing. Additionally, I'm gonna bust out my rods and I'm gonna show you some tips and tactics to catching more catfish. So stay tuned. Sorry, Nathan, you're sick. You can't come fishing. I love you. All right, it's up. Tom, I think we did it. We got up! That's what I'm talking about. Shad are a really hard bait fish to keep alive when the water's warm. So there's a couple things that help. I keep my live well constantly filling and flushing, okay? Because uh, when you first put the shad in the live well, they poop a lot and excrete a lot of chemicals that are harmful. And there's a lot of scales and all sorts of junk floating in the water. And by, flush, and by flushing the water out, you keep them alive longer. Additionally, trying to handle the shad as little as possible and get them out of the net as gently as possible is really helpful. Hey Tom, you like all those shad? Yeah. All right, let's go fishing, buddy. My little boy loves to fall asleep on a boat. Turn on that engine and he is gone. <laughs> Look at that, what a beautiful sight. Seven gorgeous rods set up and fishing. The number one question I get is what bait to use. People ask me what bait to use in ponds, what bait to use in rivers, what bait to use in the winter, the summer, whatever. And I'll tell you my favorite bait hands down is natural bait. Whatever the catfish are eating naturally, that's what I wanna give to them. They're in a pond where they eat bluegill, give them bluegill. If they're eating crayfish, give them crayfish. If they're eating shad, give them shad. Whatever they're eating naturally, give it to them fresh and as naturally as you can. Um, I like live bait if you're going after flatheads and cut bait if you're going after bluegill or, catfish, uh, or channel catfish. However, as strongly as I feel about using fresh cut bait fish and natural baits, location is so much more important than bait people get too wound up about bait and not wound up enough about their location. If you're in a spot where there aren't a lot of catfish, move, get out of there, okay? If you don't get a bite within a few minutes, you gotta move spots. And next to location, the second biggest factor I think is time of day. In the summertime, sunset, sunrise are magic. Big old uh, catfish just jumped over there. All right, so let me tell you some of the biggest myths in catfishing, okay? And the first one I want to talk to you about is stink baits. People think that the stinkier the bait, the nastier the bait, the better it is. In my experience, that's not been true at all. I tend to find the best baits are natural baits, baits that the catfish are eating naturally. And fresher and the more lively, the better. No need to get these nasty, stinky baits to try to bring in the catfish. It's just, it's just really, you're just punishing yourself. Additionally, if you can't get live bait fish or fresh, fresh bait fish, I find that corn works really well. Worms work really well. Hot dogs work really well. 
Chicken livers work well. Chicken livers are probably the nastiest bait I'll ever use. I, I just don't touch stink baits or punch baits or any of that stuff. It's a great way to ruin a marriage. Not such a great way to catch catfish. Another really common myth that I hear about catfish is that they're bottom feeders, okay? I will admit catfish are mostly on the bottom, but it's not exclusively on the bottom. They will hunt throughout the water column, especially at night. If you go out at night, night fishing, you'll hear the catfish break in the surface. You'll see them um, coming up and hitting fish on the surface. Um, I've caught lots of catfish just under the surface, in the middle of the water column. They're all over the place. To think of a catfish as only on the bottom is to really limit yourself and really to close your mind to a lot of other opportunities. Another really common myth with catfishing is that you can't eat big catfish. This isn't true. Big catfish taste fine. Um, I really can't tell much of a difference between small catfish and big catfish. However, leftover catfish tastes much worse than fresh catfish. I tend to keep the smaller ones because I can eat them in one meal, maybe two. You're not having a bunch of catfish going into the freezer. Additionally, this is good for conservation. The big catfish produce insane numbers of babies, plus catfish guard their young, and large catfish are much more effective hunters, they're much more effective at guarding their young, and they just have a lot more babies. Plus, it keeps the gene pool big, which is what we want. So let the big ones go, keep the small ones, and don't have leftovers. Oh, I often fish for with corn, and every time I do it in a video, I get inundated with comments from people saying, oh, you can't do that, that's illegal. Or you can't do that in this state, it's illegal. And every single time I've checked up on it, it's turned out to not be true. So maybe there's a state out there I haven't looked up. I haven't looked up all 50 states, but I have looked up about 20 to 30 state regulations and I've yet to find anybody who can show me a state that bans corn. There's quite a few states who limit corn in specific bodies of water, but I'm not aware of any state that bans corn everywhere in all situations. Utah used to do it, but not anymore. So check your local regulations before you go fishing. That's something you should be doing anyways, but don't automatically believe it if somebody tells you you can't fish with corn. Okay, catfish are a wonderful game fish and they fight hard. I have had some white knuckle fights with big flatheads, big blues, and channel cats can be so feisty. One of the problems though, is people don't fish for catfish with the appropriate gear. If you overpower a catfish, especially blue catfish, they tend to roll instead of making runs or jumping. I mean, if you don't overpower the fish, they'll pull hard and you'll have a great fight on your hands. Most fish can't swim backwards with any sort of strength. Certainly nothing compared to what they can do forward. So if a fish can turn its head away from you and swim away, you're gonna have a fun fight on your hands. But if you pull and turn that fish's heads towards you, and so you're just dragging him head first towards you, it's, it's nothing, all right? And then the catfish will just roll. The problem is that when people go catfishing, they gear up for the biggest catfish they could ever hope to catch not the catfish they're most likely to catch. So when they hook into a normal size fish, it's grossly overpowered. And then they're just reeling that fish head first and the fish can't turn its head and put on a good show and put on a good fight. And this is a big problem in catfishing because we have such a diverse range of catfish sizes. In catfishing, you can catch a two pound catfish and a 60 pound catfish on the same day. It can be really tricky to use gear that's gonna make your catfish fun, but still have gear that's able to tackle bigger fish. The way to solve this problem is buying high quality rods. High quality rods are light and sensitive, but they have a lot of give and backbone to them. And almost every rod on the market, even the super cheap ones, have a lot more strength than people believe. So don't buy a rod that's too big, okay? If your catfish aren't making runs, if they aren't taking drag every now and then, you're overdoing it. Come on, baby. Yeah, come on. Okay, you gotta wait for it, right? You gotta wait for it till the fish pulls and it keeps pulling for two or three solid seconds. And this has got a circle hook on the end, so I'm not gonna set the hook. I'm not gonna jerk it. I'm just gonna reel until that rod bends all the way down, then I'm gonna take it out of the rod holder, okay? So I can see it looks like it might be monkeying with a little bit, 
not quite sure if it's on or not. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to turn the handle a little bit. Oh, and see how it just moved? Yeah, he ain't on there. But I haven't pulled it so far that he can't come back and hit it. When you fish with live bait, you're going to lose a lot of fish, a lot of bait, just because of the nature of the size of the bait you're using. So when you get a hit like that, let it sit for a few minutes, nothing comes back, and it goes quiet, then pull it in, check your bait. Yeah, bait strip, I can feel it. That's why you check your bait. Here comes the boat. I often find that I get hits right as a boat comes by. My theory is that shad get caught up in the props and chopped up. So the catfish get used to thinking that that's the sound of a dinner bell. And they start feeding a little bit more aggressively when they hear a boat motor go by. Okay, I've been here for about 15-20 minutes and I haven't gotten hardly any bites. I've gotten two hits and that's it. Um, so I want to move spots, but of course pulling up anchor and moving this ship around, it's a little bit of work. So first what I'm going to do is reel in and recast to different locations. And if that doesn't work, then we're moving the whole boat. You know, one of the myths about catfishing is that catfish just eat dead stuff. Absolutely isn't true. Catfish are apex predators. They're top of the food chain and they like to hunt and kill their food. I've caught a lot of catfish on live bait and I've caught a lot of catfish with lures. And I can't tell you the number of times I've been reeling in bait like this and wham, gotten a hit halfway to the boat. And if you sit out here at night, you're going to watch catfish coming up and attacking and hunting a shad and bluegill. Catfish, they like to hunt. Now young catfish, especially uh, channel catfish, they're omnivores. They're going to eat anything they can. They'll eat uh, seaweed, they'll eat snails, they'll eat bugs and fish and dead stuff, anything they can get their mouth on. But by the time they get some size to them, the type of fish we want to catch, 90% of their diet is live fish. They're hunters. Another myth is that you have to wash your hands when you're eating, especially if you've been handling catfish bait. This is complete nonsense. You don't need to do that. But why does all my food taste like shad? Huh. Shout out to my Asian subscribers. And if you know what this is, and you've ever drank it before, let me know. Leave a comment. We've been waiting here too long. Alright, here's another myth. People think fishing takes patience. And I'm a big advocate that patience is not a virtue in fishing. If you're not catching fish, you're doing something wrong. So don't just sit there and stare at your rods. Do something different. If you're not catching fish, change something. And we're changing spots right now. All right, little buddy. We got a fish already. You want, you want to reel them in? Yeah, because okay, I'm you, strong enough. You're strong enough to do it? Okay, well, I need somebody who's strong enough to do it. Here they come! Oh, yeah, here it comes. Oh, nice. Nice channel cat. Ah, there we go. Here, will you flip the bale? Nice fat channel cat. Got the bumps on here because he's getting ready to spawn. It's a big male, I believe. So one of the myths about catfish that I hear a lot is that their whiskers can sting you. And as you can see, the whiskers are completely harmless. They're just little bobbles of flesh. However, look right here. See right there? There's a spine right here and right here. And there's one 
right there. There's three spines on a catfish, one on the dorsal fin and two on the pectoral fin. They're really sharp, especially on the little catfish. You see kind of how I'm holding them? Got my hand in front of the dorsal fin, gripping them behind the pectoral fin, grabbing them with two hands, just got to control them. Most people, when they get stuck, it's stuck because the fish is flopping around. So control the fish and you'll be fine. Okay, let's get this guy back in. Okay, ready? One, two, three. There's a lot of myths about catfish poison. And cat, not all catfish are poisonous. Mad Tom catfish, which are about this big, and bullhead catfish, which usually don't get over four or five pounds, are have poison in them. It's a mild poison, like a bee sting. You're not gonna cause you any problems unless it gets infected or you have a crazy allergic reaction. But channel catfish, like that one, and blue catfish, they don't have any poison, okay? Um, so all you have to worry about is infection. So a lot of people will tell you, oh, you know, if you get stung by catfish, you have to pee on it or rub the catfish belly slime into the wound to neutralize the poison. This is nonsense. There isn't even any poison in channel catfish and blue catfish, okay? So most of the time, people are trying to neutralize something that ain't there. If you get stung by a catfish, use an antiseptic, clean it out, because your real problem is, uh, is infection. Now, I know a lot of people have left comments and told me, I got stung by a catfish, I rubbed the belly slime in, and it felt better within seconds or minutes. And the reason why is because it always feels better after a few minutes. I've been stabbed, stung, scraped more times than you can count. And every time it just hurts for a few minutes and then it goes away. It's just like any other or sort of nasty cut. Just clean out the wound and you'll be fine. Yeah, see what I mean? This catfish got me with his spine while I was shooting the video. It doesn't hurt at all, man, there's, because there's no venom in channel catfish. Okay, another myth I hear all the time is that light scare catfish. Now, that may be true in some places, but I gotta tell you, I've got a lot of LEDs on my boat. I use them all the time, and it doesn't seem to bother the fish at all. Check this out. Yeah, that one's burned out. But I've got, I even got LEDs on the side. I've got LEDs on the front. And I still catch fish with these things. The only reason why I turn them off is to not drain the battery. Look at that big old full moon. Now, I've heard a lot of people say that full moons are the best time to fish. I've heard a lot of people say full moons are the worst time to catch catfish. <sighs> to be honest, I don't know. I think I kind of agree with the full moon is bad. But darn it, just don't know. You know, I've just not seen any science behind it. Whoop, that was a hit. I fish when I can get the time off work, not based on the moon. The bats are hitting my line and it keeps making my rod tips go crazy and getting me excited. So <laughs> we might catch a bat here in a little bit. Where is it? Come here, right here. This one right here. Come, 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 come reel it, Tom. Well, I think we might have a double here, Tommy. Okay, so probably the biggest, most prolific catfishing myth I've ever heard is the story about somebody's uncle's brother's co-worker who was a diver at fill-in-the-blank local reservoir, and he was repairing the dam, and when he got down there, he ran into a catfish the size of a Volkswagen Beetle. It's always a Volkswagen Beetle. And he was so scared that it came up and refused to ever dive again. I have heard that story so many times from people who so sincerely believe it. And it's an awesome story, man. It's, it's awesome. I want it to be true, but it's not true. And let me explain why. A Volkswagen Beetle is 168 inches long. The largest catfish ever recorded in North America was 143 pounds and 57 inches long. Now something you got to know about catfish is there's not a linear relationship between length and weight. You add 10 inches of length to a catfish, you're usually almost doubling its weight. So a Volkswagen Beetle is almost three times the length 
of the largest catfish ever recorded in North America. So, I mean, that thing would weigh as much as a Volkswagen Beetle. It would be ridiculous, okay? So we're not talking just a little bit bigger than the world record. We're talking multiple times, you know, five, ten times heavier than the largest catfish ever recorded in North America. So it's a little absurd. Though I got to tell you, having uh, done some spear fishing and 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 a little bit of snorkeling and stuff, you get underwater, you run into a shark or an eel or something. It looks a whole lot bigger underwater. <laughs> But at any rate, there are no catfish the size of Volkswagen beetles floating around in whatever local reservoir or lake there is. And if you disagree, go ahead and put a comment. It's a fun story. It's nothing to get that wound up about. Well, at any rate, it's late. I've got work tomorrow morning and Tom is way past his bedtime. So we'll have to say goodbye, but hopefully you enjoyed this video. We put out new videos every week, so don't forget to click subscribe and to activate notifications. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.